I'm not a lawyer, but let me tell you what happened on day 20 of the Karen Reed trial. There were two witnesses of the day, but I'm going to jump into the second one because he covered a lot. His name is Sergeant Bukaki, and he was lead investigator Michael Proctor's boss. Did you catch that? So even though Michael Proctor is the lead investigator on this case, the testimony we're about to go through came from his boss. So Bukaki walks through the investigation from learning of the incident, interviewing the McCabe's, interviewing Karen Reed, as well as the towing of Karen Reed's car back to the Sally Port at Canton Police Station. Now there are a ton of videos and a lot of testimony, so just get ready. I received the call approximately 6.44 in the morning or so from the H Troop headquarters, which is the field uh, headquarters for the Metro Boston area. And they advised me that there was a body in the snowbank in Canton. I asked for further details uh, and advised them that I was not on call, but I would call the on-call trooper uh, and, and let them know that there was a call out uh, requesting their assistance. That's what I did. I called uh, Trooper Proctor and advised them to contact Canton Police. Uh, trooper Proctor began uh, making phone calls, gathering information. I told Trooper Proctor that I would start shoveling out during the blizzard uh, and then uh, proceed to meet him in Canton to begin our investigation. We met at the Canton Police Department. Uh, Trooper Proctor was in the parking lot in his vehicle, and I pulled in, backed in next to his. We walked into the police department, were guided to the detective uh, uh, department division of the PD, and we met with uh, the detectives from Canton. From the Canton Police Department, we proceeded to uh, the McCabe residence. Uh, we first spoke with Miss Jennifer McCabe. We then spoke with uh, Mr. Matt McCabe, and then we spoke with Mr. Brian Albert. Each interview was conducted separately. Once we were done with that interview, Mr. McCabe came downstairs and Ms. Mc, uh, Ms. McCabe uh, gave us the same courtesy. And once the, that interview was over, Mr. Brian Albert had uh, arrived and we interviewed him briefly. Uh, we proceeded to the Good Samaritan Hospital in Brockton. Once in the room, uh, we observed Mr. O'Keefe's body uh, on the medical bag, bed or gurney and um, his clothing, which had been cut off of him, were on the floor at the foot of the the bed. After viewing Mr. O'Keefe's body, um, we proceeded to identify the clothing items and bag them into evidence bags. After you left uh, the Good Samaritan Hospital, where is it that you went? We went to 345 Country Hill Drive in Dighton. We have never met the Reed family. They have never met us. And with the clothing that we were wearing, um, it would be difficult for them to um, see that we were law enforcement. Now, Sergeant Mechanic, when you began to speak uh, to defendant, Prior to any sort of substantive um, conversation, um, what, if any, conversation did you have with her about the conversation you were going to have? Um, Ms. Reed responded in the same tone of voice, um, answered questions. The content of the conversation began with, she stated that she's willing to answer our questions. She just doesn't want to go into too much detail. She stated that she was um, in a relationship with Mr. O'Keefe uh, that morning, meaning the 28th of January. She got into a fight with Mr. O'Keefe over what the the niece and nephew were being fed uh, for breakfast, or what they had for breakfast. Um, she went on to say that she met Mr. O'Keefe at CF McCarthy's approximately 9 p.m. the night of the 28th of January, 2022. The gentlemen were drinking, consuming beers, Bud Lights, and she was drinking vodka soda. We went on through the um, conversation, the interview, to, to the Waterfall restaurant, at which point she was asked if she left CF McCarthy's with a beverage or a container from that establishment, to which point she stated that she did not. She also confirmed that Mr. O'Keefe did not have any injuries on him when she interacted with him at CF McCarthy's or the Waterfall. He did not get into any verbal or physical altercations with anyone to have sustained those injuries. She stated that once at the Waterfall, they stayed for approximately an hour, uh, hanging out with acquaintances. And then um, they left the waterfall. She drove them to, after they were invited to a residence, she drove them to a location in Canton where she dropped Mr. O'Keefe off. The defendant stated that she was having stomach issues and did not want to enter the, the residence. She was asked if she saw Mr. O'Keefe walk into the home at 34 Fairview, and she stated she did not. She stated that she made a three-point turn after dropping him off and left. She was asked if she knew if how she found out about the damage to her vehicle, to which she stated, quote, I don't know, it happened last night. She stated that when she woke up, she began looking for Mr. O'Keefe. Um, and when she found him in the snow, she began CPR. 
the defendant stated that while she was performing CPR, Mr. O'Keefe had sustained um, injuries and was bleeding from the nose and the mouth. Mr. O'Keefe's eyes were swollen. Once the ter uh, interview was terminated, I advised Ms. Uh, Reed that her phone was going to be seized as evidence and her vehicle was going to be seized as evidence as well. And did you subsequently seize both of those items, sir? Yes, we did. And similar to the clothing of Mr. O'Keefe, as far as evidence was concerned, was that packaged and um, taped and transported back to the office in a similar fashion? The device was, the vehicle was transported via tow truck that was dispatched by Dighton PD on our request. Mm -hmm. I recognize it to be uh, Dighton videos um, as it relates to the location where the interview and the vehicle was seized from. That would be the Lexus SUV owned by the defendant. Yes, uh, the passenger side exit was the defendant, and then the driver's side vehicle was Mr. Reed. Yes, I observed the defendant and her father at the rear right tail light. This video captures the vehicle um, being moved into position to be loaded up onto the flatbed um, for transport from the scene. Rear tail light is illuminated. You can see a white uh, light um, coming from that tail light right there. Once we left the residence in Dighton, we proceeded following the tow truck back to the Canton Police Department. The vehicle was unloaded and put into a heated sally port located at the Canton Police Department. It's a uh, location that serves as a storage for a vehicle. All right, we're about to get into some of the surveillance videos and because they are kind of long, I have sped them up and cut some things out. So just know some of these edits came from me, but not all of them. Uh, this camera is uh, capturing the driveway entrance to the Canton Police Department. That is the tow truck transporting the defendant's vehicle uh, arriving at Canton PD. That is the Sally Port uh, two bay garage at Canton Police Department with the antique Canton Cruiser on the bottom of the screen and the open um, spot for a vehicle um, in the middle of the screen with the four-wheel drive all-terrain all vehicle at the top. That's Trooper Proctor and myself there. Yeah. We're establishing a perimeter around the vehicle with uh, yellow tape in order to prevent um, or alert and advise anyone in the area to stay away from the vehicle. From the Cannes Police Station, I escorted the vehicle to the Milton Barracks for safekeeping. That's correct. That's the opposite view from what we just uh, viewed in the previous video. I believe that's myself and then another uh, officer. I, I don't know who uh, that other officer is. Child, I can't see that. Based on the appearance of the driveway, we know that this uh, recording took place prior to the blizzard of January 29th. Yes, that is the defendant operating her black and colorless Lexus SUV bearing. Sergeant, with reference to this video and the one uh, just previously from 119, um, where is Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle parked? The vehicle is parked in the back corner of the driveway along the fence uh, in the same location as, it, as it's parked in the previous video. And at some point, do you see the defendant's vehicle back out of the garage in the same um, directionality uh, that it did in the prior video 119? Yes, you do. This, uh, the timing of this video is uh, approximately 5.07 a.m. when the defendant left the home uh, through the garage via her vehicle. The portion of this video in the still shot presented identifies a missing damaged rear right taillight exposing the white light coming from the right side of that taillight. Now, earlier in that video, uh, did you observe the 
defendant's vehicle coming close to or coming into contact with Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? Yes, I did. And as far as Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle, at least from this video, what if any damage did you observe to Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? No damage. And as far as the ground area around where Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle is parked, specifically the rear of that vehicle, what if any red pieces or anything did you observe on the ground around Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle? Nothing was observed. <laughs> As far as the vehicles in the foreground area uh, from this particular camera shot, do you know whose vehicles those are? Yes. Uh, the vehicle in the top left corner is Mr. O'Keefe's vehicle. The vehicle in the middle left is the defendant's vehicle. I, I do not know who the other two vehicles are. That there is the defendant, and that there is Mr. Reed. as a defendant's brother. Sergeant, from your review of those <clears throat> videos, at various points you observed the defendant's brother cleaning off the defendant's car, correct? That's correct. At any point in time, did you observe the defendant's brother uh, cleaning off the area of the right rear passenger side's uh, taillight of the defendant's car? I did not. Now, Sergeant, turning your attention to February 1st of 2022, and at some point, uh, did you and Trooper Keefe on that day go to uh, the CF McCarthy's establishment? Yes, we did. The purpose of our visit was to retrieve surveillance video uh, during the target time in question that um, we knew the victim and the defendant had visited that establishment. Also, any transaction receipts that we could uh, collect from that location. Those are still shots of the CF McCarthy's surveillance uh, video that we collected from that establishment. Here, I observe a cylindrical vase-style uh, cocktail glass. A cylindrical cocktail glass. And so that would be the second drink, is that correct? That's correct. And that's at approximately uh, 915, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, she received the shock glass beverage and poured it into the tall cylindrical cocktail glass, and then Mr. John O'Keefe stirred it for her. And so that would now be the third drink, is that correct? That is correct. And that's about 920 p.m., is that correct? That's correct. She receives another shot glass beverage. So this would now be the fourth drink, is that correct? That is correct. And per the video, that's about 933 p.m., is that correct? That is correct. She received a tall cylindrical cocktail glass. And in addition to that, what, if anything else, did she receive uh, from the bartender there in that time? A shot glass, shot glass size beverage. Uh, so that would be drinks five and six, is that correct? That's correct. And uh, per the timestamp on the, the bar video, this is now about 9.57 p.m., is that correct? That's correct. Prior to the shots being taken, a shot glass was poured into the cylindrical tall glass. And again, so that would be drink number seven at that point? At this point, she's consumed or is in possession of six drinks. And this is at approximately 10.29 p.m., is that correct? Yes, that's correct. She has a cylindrical tall cocktail glass in her hand. It's drink number six is uh, empty, or near the bottom, almost empty. Uh, once the defendant uh, got drink number seven, the defendant and Mr. O'Keefe walk out of C.F. McCarthy's, the defendant holding the beverage tall cylindrical glass in her hand. That is the still shots uh, presented to me and entered into the exhibit of Mr. O'Keefe walking out of the Waterfall uh, Bar and Grill at 12.11 a.m. on the night of uh, the early morning hours of January 29th, holding a cocktail glass. Mr. O'Keefe is uh, observed here. He's holding that shorter, fatter cocktail glass as he's walking out of the establishment. This is Mr. O'Keefe walking out of, out of the Waterfall establishment, holding the cocktail glass in his right hand as he uh, walks towards Washington Street. Mr. Lally, why don't we end for the day? It's been a long day. Everybody ready to go home? Yes, Bev. It's been a long day. Working on the recap for day 21 because Alan Jackson did cross-examination and we know how he gets down. <laughs>